Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Vail Pandian, from, a professor from All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Today I am going to talk to you about the module instrumentation in mass spectrometer. As you know, this mass spectrometer uh, in which uh, the charged ions or molecule has to fly through vacuum, this is the construction of a mass spectrometer is pretty unique and of course it is evolved through years. So this thing I am going to discuss today for the paper Techniques in Molecular Biophysics. So the, to, in this lecture you will understand the construction working of liquid chromatography coupled tandem mass spectrometer in which the ions which are in liquid state which is coming from liquid chromatography after separation is getting converted to gaseous state and, and ionized so it becomes charged compound the charged ions the ions are you know separated accelerated and identified by the quadrupoles after that it is analyzed therefore every section is having different different principles and a unique function the major accessories for running lc ms ms are the zero air or you are having a argon or nitrogen gas that is ultra pure gas compressed air a dehumidifier basically that in mass spectroscopy we don't allow the oxygen to enter in different places for several obvious reasons therefore inert gas is used at different places a compressed air is is made from the compressed air usually we isolate nitrogen and the ultra pure nitrogen is fed in different places to do different job i will explain it when i am coming to explain about the several parts about it the dehumidifier is just try to remove the any water molecule which is present over there because if the water molecule gets inside this will expand because the vacuum is very high so continuously the vacuum which is produced inside is very unique we will discuss about it high vacuum pump is working 24 by 7 to create that vacuum which is required so HPLC is the one which is a sample feeder here which first the sample which has been inj injected into the HPLC is separated by column chromatography and it purifies the compound which is supposed to be analyzed and sometimes we use sample infusion assembly in that case sometimes when you try to set the method we need to infuse this molecule in the by using a, a small delivery pump in a very small minute rates in the about 5 microliter per minute or 10 microliter per minute we use in the speed to to set the conditions for the mass to analyze that particular compound therefore in this uh, lecture you will understand all these things let us see about the lc msms instrumentation various modular components are involved in this lc msms instrumentation where first the sample inlet the sample inlet in which the purified compounds which are inserted into the mass analyzer by using various instruments such as HPLC that is high performance liquid chromatography or UPLC that is ultra high performance liquid chromatography nano liquid chromatography micro infusion assembly or nano spray techniques in any one of this with this any one of these techniques the sample is purified to such an extent that a single isolated compound is inserted inside the ion source the ion source for and the lcm sms differs uh, by their their properties electrospray ionization atmospheric pressure chemical ionization atmospheric pressure photo ionization or the techniques are prevalently used for ionizing these compounds which is in liquid state esi is the one which, which there is no heat applied therefore thermal degradation is not happening in esi therefore it this is the most versatile technique uh, for soft ionization then the mass analyzer does msms as i was explaining to you thus this gives a selective fragmentation this fragmented ions enter into signal detection part where ion detectors are present where the ion detectors could be a photo or electron multipliers where this data is fed for data interpretation and it is interpreted by using this 
uh, an algorithm. The mass is altogether calibrated by using known mass in, in casket and the mass analyzer is tuned and a calibration curve is set based upon the calibration curve this mass analyzer analyzes the mass of the compound. This I have already shown you before but just recollect our idea about the mass spectrometer. This is what we see here is a sample inlet it is uh, uh, UPLC and uh, the ion source is ESI electrospray ionization. The mass analyzer is a uh, triple quarter pole ion detector is electron capture and data interpretation is done by a software which is uh, which is specifically made for this instrument. This is uh, from my laboratory at uh, the DST sponsored uh, uh, high precision bioanalytical laboratory of Holland Institute of Medical Sciences. Choice of ionization techniques and methods. The first one is electron impact ionization as I explained you this is a hard ionization technique typically used in gas chromatography coupled mass spectroscopy. Here the analyte is in gaseous state therefore it is directly bombarded with electron and thereby the fragments are analyzed and the molecule is analyzed based upon uh, the spectrum which is getting produced. Whereas, whereas when it comes to LCMSMS when we use liquid chromatography we have to use soft ionization techniques that is the way we use it here is ESI that is electrospray ionization. The electrospray ionization is a very specific technique in which uh, directly the polar compounds or uh, water soluble compounds or organic compounds that such as methanol, astronitrile, ethanol containing compounds are safely converted to its, uh, its uh, gaseous state and uh, but, uh, along with the ionization and that is and that, that will be uh, allowed to enter into the mass analyzer. APCI is atmospheric pressure chemical ionization because here the technique is that it, it does uh, chemical ionization is slightly we apply heat to do the job uh, to ionize it and uh, APPI is atmospheric pressure photo ionization this is typically used for nonpolar compounds. So, here this picture shows you that the suitability of uh, different techniques when we are trying to increase the polarity or when we are trying to increase the volatility that is uh, uh, how are we trying to do it along with the molecular weight. Sensitivity of ionization techniques. When you try to compare the sensitivity among different ionization techniques along with its versatility, you must understand that we try to minimize the amount of uh, heat on the applied sample, thereby you try to avoid thermal degradation of samples. Here ESI is one such uh, versatile technique uh, which is used typically for a pretty high range. ESI that is electrospray ionization, but electrospray ionization is added with the second dimension as nano ESI. Here the amount of uh, fluid which is trying to infuse through this is reduced to, reduced to nano scale thereby the sensitivity is further increased multiple folds. So, ESI is uh, prevalently used for most of the polar to moderately polar compounds and thermolabile compounds safely or a, or to a wide range of uh, uh, molecular weight. Whereas MALDI is used uh, for very high molecular weight especially for peptides uh, or uh, polymers which are having a very high molecular weight we still prefer MALDI uh, that is matrix associated uh, laser desorption ionization. This picture shows you a glance at the typical sensitivity and mass ranges allowed by different ionization techniques uh, which provide a clear answer to the question which are most useful. Is it electron impact or APCI or DOS or some, somewhat limiting in terms of upper mass range. While ESI, nano ESI, MALDI have a high practical mass range and this is how the uh, um, different ionization techniques are helping us in dealing with different type of analytical samples. The fragmentation of the uh, for the fragmentation of the molecule which happens in the quadrupole 2 in which what we classically call it as collusion cell. In the collusion cell the molecule which is ionized molecule which is separated by the quadrupole 1 is bombarded with the accelerated the neutral molecule that is nitrogen. Here nitrogen need to be of 99.9 percent .9 pure. So, it is not possible to use the pressurized gas cylinders. Therefore, 
and inert gas is uh, so continuously prepared and fed into different sections and this section is very important. So, for this we use this uh, a very uh, unique method for, for this up preparation of ultra pure, nit ultra pure nitrogen. Sometimes people do use argon or helium for this place, depends upon the uh, instrumentation or depends upon the manufacturer. So, this, this uh, uses the principle called the pressure swing of adsorption principle. So, here this is a heatless method, there is no uh, fancy electrical connections here, it purely works on the diffusion of oxygen and basically it obeys Fick's law of diffusion and Henry law of solubility. So, here this filter, this the filters are molecular filters what we classically called as carbon molecular sieves CM, CMS. The compressed air and dehydrated, compressed and dehydrated air at a very high pressure is used and it is when it is, when it is passed through this filter, this cartridge filter in which oxygen that is smaller in size which is having a kinetic, diam kinetic diameter of 3.46 Armstrong diffuses much faster than nitrogen which is about uh, no, 3.64 Armstrong. Hence, oxygen gets absorbed into adsorbed into uh, ca carbon molecular sieves and nitrogen is collected as a high pressure product. So, this is a process through which we try to do uh, separation of nitrogen. The electron impact ionization, it is the technique which has been used for years together in while we are combining mass, gas chromatography with mass spectrometry and it is one of the uh, technique which is which we classify as a hard ionization technique. What we do is that here we have an electron gun through which the electrons are allowed to accelerate it and bombard on the molecule which is in gaseous state. The gas chromatography as you know well the molecule is in gaseous state when it is fed inside the mass analyzer this fast moving electrons they bombard and they make fragments and they ionize it. It ejects the electron out and it makes the molecule ionized. So, this ionized molecule is absorbed in a classical YouTube mass spectrometer. It has been captured and uh, this is a way that you know the uh, volatile polar nonpolar compounds and nonpolar compounds were analyzed classically. If it is a polar compound it is very difficult to deal with this kind of ionization technique. You need to convert this into a nonpolar compound by derivatization process then we have to do it. Till it will give you a little idea about what is this electron uh, how the electron is being generated. You must have seen in your you know uh, age old uh, radios or you know the TV which is using a picture tube you must have seen that uh, a gluing tungsten on the back side that is a where you know the thermionic emission happens the electrons are emitted is one of the uh, greatest discovery when you heat a element its electrons are getting emitted it is in a cathode position it is accelerated and is allowed to bombard. But here the what is more important thing in this kind of uh, ionization technique is it produces the fragments of the compounds which are pretty reproducible. Therefore, library screening is very easily possible. For example, if you just give the volatile compound inside you can find out you know this is the volatile compound based upon its fragmentation pattern which is which is not possible when it comes to other type of ionization techniques. Well, it has its own advantage. Atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, it is a technique which is uh, used for uh, for ionizing the compounds which are having moderate polarity and uh, this, is, this is typically done by a nebulization of effluent is assisted by a heated gas flow typically nitrogen where a gas phase neutral molecules are created. The gas phase neutral molecules are passed through a corona discharge needle which is placed between the nebularized nebulization probe and the first vacuum orifice is placed in a metallic needle in which uh, you know typically you applied uh, 2 to 5 kilovolts of uh, DC voltage. This corona discharge the static voltage generates a charged plasma from the ambient source. The molecule passing through this plasma are ionized. Through this ionization process the analytes which are having moderate polarity and a little more you know it is having a problem in solubilizing in water these kind of compounds are ionized by using this technique. 
and this video will explain you the working principle of this APCI. Electrospray ionization, the construction of uh, the module for this ionization process consists of heaters, that is for heaters for the gas. There are two types of gas are applied here. The gas one is passed through the inlet, that is LC inlet, in which the solution which is coming from liquid chromatography is fed through this. And the gas two is a heated gas which is applied to this output which is produced by the LC, in, LC inlet in which charge droplets are getting produced. This charge droplets are produced because the inlet and the curtain plate where we are having an orifice for the entry of the molecules inside the mass analyzer, there is the electrical potential of 5.5 kilovolt is applied at DC voltage. So the, the droplets which are getting formed are charged droplets because due to this difference in electric potential, the concentric flow of gas molecules that heats up this um, uh, solvents and solvent starts evaporating slowly, slowly. So when the solvent is started evaporating, the molecules present in the droplets started condensing. When it starts condensing, then molecular overcrowding happens over there. As these compounds are charged positively, this droplet is heavily charged positively, this positive charge repels each other. The repulsion makes Coulomb explosion after it reaches a release electrical limit. That leaves ions, it just the explosion makes the ions to exist in gaseous form which are charged. Typically you would be able to see a mass of hydrogen is added, that is one atom AMU is added along with the mass of the analyte. In the analyting spectrum, you will be able to see support, uh, suppose if it is having a molecular weight of 200, you will be seeing M plus H that is 201, typically in this mass spectrum. This electrospray ionization uh, process, this picture shows you clearly what is happening when the droplets leave the probe. When the droplets are leaving the probe, desolvency is happening continuously and the this uh, molecular overcrowding which is happening that causes this which reaches the release charge limit where the Coulomb explosion happens. Here desolvency always happens when it happens the temperature drops in the droplet. Therefore no additional heat is been applied or when the desolvency process is going on there is no process here which heats up the molecule. Therefore thermal degradation is not happening. Usually we use ionizing, uh, to help this ionization process, we always add weak acid like formic acid, elastic acid is added into the analyte to enhance the uh, process of ionization in this soft ionization technique. While discussing about this working principle of uh, electrospray ionization method, the concentric flow of heated gas dries a droplet which is causing this Coulomb explosion and leaves the molecule. You will be able to see in this video that how is it happening in the real time. Here different probes which are used for ionizing compounds of different nature are shown here. This schematic diagram shows that the first one is ESI that is electrospray ionization. As you see here that the electrical potential is applied and as I told you that Coulomb explosion which is responsible for making ions to species, here concentric flow of gas is applied through the heated nebulizers which are kept in the sites. Whereas APCI, when you come to APCI, the nebulizer is a heated nebulizer. This heated nebulizer in which appropriate heat is applied where the solvent is just evaporated which is leaving solvent containing gas molecule in the gaseous state. And when it is nebulized, corona discharge is applied, uh, the, the ionization is enhanced by corona discharge. When it comes to APPI that is atmospheric pressure photoionization, the corona needle is replaced with a krypton UV lamp in which ultraviolet lamp is applied to do the ionization process. Altogether in all this process except ESI, APCI and APPI heated nebulizer is used where thermolabel compounds are difficult to handle. Whereas ESI is capable of handling 
a wide range of polar compounds, mildly non-polar compounds like drug-like molecules and uh, uh, peptides, proteins, their molecular compounds, everything is possible. Whereas when it comes to APCI, moderately non-polar compounds, thermolabile compounds cannot be used here and uh, molecular range is slightly low when it comes to APCI, we will be able to go up to 1000 Daltons. Similarly, in ABPI, here highly non-polar compounds can be used to do the ionization process and uh, Krypton UV lamp as I told it is used to do, uh, that's a uh, source of uh, ionization and all the rest of the things are similar to that of APCI. When it comes to APPI, that is atmospheric pressure photo ionization, there is something very important. The atmospheric pressure photo ionization uses typically DuPonts to do the ionization process. What are these DuPonts? DuPonts will be having a low ionization potentials. Classically, anthracene will be having 7.4 electron volts, caffeine, 4 nitrotoluene, fluoranthine, these are all the compounds which are used which are having a low ionization potential. When you apply uh, this uh, ultraviolet radiation, that these compounds, they get first ionized and uh, they are the ionized to one which, conver which converts the ionized compounds or capable of ionizing the secondary analyte which is coming in the solution. So, typically for this ABPI, we use toluene and acetone which are having 8.82 or 9.7 electron volts to do this possible. Typically, photo ionization in which we use krypton lamp which is capable of, you know, capable up to 10 to 10.6 electron volts, this will be able to do that. And this is how we try to do, we try to use DuPonts to do the ionization when the substance is present in methanol, astronitrile, water, etc. We try to do this. Let us see once if the ionized molecule is entering into the quadrupole, it's getting accelerated and it has been pushed into the first quadrupole by a mechanism that is uh, pre quadrupole mechanisms. Once if it enters into quadrupole, what happens to them? How are we trying to select a particular molecule ion of having particular molecular weight? This is what, what you are going to see in this. So, what you see here is when the quadrupoles are connected, this diagram shows that how the quadrupoles are connected. Four rods. How are they connected? They are connected with the alternating direct current as well as radio frequency. This combination of DC with the RF voltage, which is going to particularly select a molecular weight ion to the resonate. This radio frequency gives a momentum for them to move ahead. And when it circulates, the typically this uh, picture shows how the changing polarity is driving the molecule of a particular uh, molecular weight which is resonating, uh, resonating in between the quadrupoles to stay and the vacuum sucks the rest of the molecules and is exhausted. But the particular molecular weight compound and uh, ion which is when it is resonating is typically attracted or distracted by alternatively changing polarity that makes it to, to survive in, among between the quadrupoles. Now, the torque which is getting produced which makes it to take a circular path and it starts moving in the quadrupole towards next to quadrupole. This typically the lens currents are adjusted. We call this different focusing currents applied in different sections as lens currents. They are adjusted in such a way so that this is smoothly driven towards the detector. The voltages are subsequently placed. So, you take the spiral path leading towards that helps us to choose this based upon mass weight charge ratio. Typically, the quadrupoles are made up of ceramic or gold coated ceramic rods, basically those who are having very low thermal expansion are used. Therefore, in the high quality quadrupole instruments, especially when you are trying to use uh, Q-TOF machines, it is very important to maintain the room temperature at a constant uh, 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 value. If there is a fluctuation in the room temperature, can change the mass value as it is calibrated for very high accuracy. So, mass spectrometers are usually kept in a very constant uh, room temperature to avoid this kind of problem. Now, as I explained you about the 
quadrupoles about the RF and DC voltages in the quadrupoles. The quadrupoles are kept under very high vacuum and as I told you about the radio frequency and uh, which is driving the molecules to, uh, to go ahead in a circular path inside this quadrupoles uh, through which the separation happens and isolated molecule has been projected towards further consequences before it reaches quadrupole 2 where it gets fragmented for further uh, analyzing process. So, this video is going to explain you about what happens really inside the quadrupole. This picture shows you together what is happening in Q2 that is quadrupole 2 where what we called as a collusion cell. The scanning for fragments, this picture typically shows in quadrupole 1, we have set the values so that a particular molecular weight has been selected. In quadrupole 2, what you are seeing here is in the collision cell, the black dots that is uh, neutral gas molecules like nitrogen and argon are allowed to collide with these molecules. That causes fragmentation. After this fragments, a different molecular weight fragments are you are getting here. This is fragment spectrum. This is as a result of the collision which has happened in quadrupole 2. So, from here we choose a better ion to identify quadrupole, the parent ion which is happening in quadrupole 1. So, together the parent ion and daughter ion, parent ion is in quadrupole 1 and the daughter ion which is happening in quadrupole 3, together this combination helps us to figure out the one which you are looking forward for with a very high degree of accuracy. This collisionally, this collision cell, what typically happens is that what we call it as collisionally activated dissociation. The molecule when it is fragmented, it produces fragment ions which are, which are charged. That is what it is shown here. This collision sometimes happens even before entering into the mass analyzer. This can happen after ionization itself. Therefore, the during the experiment, this is taken care that this kind of fragmentation is not happening in the in-source. That is called as in-source fragmentation. So, a mass analyst has to understand about these intricacies involved and different stages. It is just like you have to understand each and every stage what is happening and is altogether it is every experiment in mass spectroscopy, it is it's, it's an experiment. Now, let us finally see uh, how we are trying to detect the ions which are flying, the which are being ionized, separated, fragmented and fragmented piece of uh, ion is finally hitting the detector. That shows that uh, this ion is now coming finally to a detector part. This has to be converted into signal. This signal is classically done by using a different uh, type of electron capture or uh, this uh, ion capture detectors. What you, call, what you see here is ion entering in the electron multiplier. Once if the ion hits the electron multiplier, it causes a secondary emission of electrons and the electron is getting multiplied. So, you get a bunch of collective signal. The signal is amplified here. Similarly that, you know, whether you use uh, dynodes, again the same principle happens there. Sometimes in some instruments, the ion is allowed to hit uh, a phosphorescence, phosphorescence uh, disk in which the light which is getting produced is photo amplified. See, look, you can amplify as using electron amplifier or you can use a, a photo amplifier as a secondary amplification technique. After this is getting amplified, this data has been fed and uh, you know that, that, that is getting further processed. The, strike, the striking ion typically ejects electron uh, by a secondary uh, ejection. This cascading process can result up to the gain of 10 to the power 8. So, in some instruments, photomultipliers are used and uh, uh, you know some other patented, uh, uh, patented uh, detectors also been used in different instruments. But these altogether the instrument is calibrated using uh, uh, molecular weight uh, compounds which are known to have a particular molecular weight. So, the calibration curve has been fit for molecular weight determination and that calibration curve is used for subsequent uh, evaluation of unknown compounds. Let me tell you one more function when the quad 2, we are not going to use quad 2 for fragmentation studies, 
then we can use the entire quad quad 1 2 3 together they behave as a single quad which helps us to get full scan spectra this spectra which increases the resolution of the uh, analysis where all of them I mean quad 1 is set for the same molecular weight quad 2 which allows that to quad quad 3 again quad 3 is set for the same molecular weight therefore you this you get a full scan spectra and this can be used to get a very good uh, resolution and uh, full scan spectra so students uh, let me summarize what you have learned from this today's module we have seen about the basic construction of mass spectrometer the ionization techniques which are used to convert liquid analyte to gaseous state ions that is ionization process by using electrospray ionization atmospheric pressure uh, chemical ionization, atmos atmospheric pressure, photo ionization methods, working of quadrupoles, how they are trying to separate, how they do the fragmentation in the quadrupole itself, that is in the Q2, and how they are getting scanned, how they are getting isolated uh, in the quadrupole 3, and how the signal acquisition happens, and how, how is it getting converted to mass to charge ratio, and it is interpreted for our analysis. So this is the basic working principles of principle of mass spectroscopy when we try to deal with the triple quadrupole that is quadrupole quad three quads which are arranged in series that what we have seen it before. Thank you very much.